Mm. Hello, everybody. So, just giving a little bit of an update. So, a lot has actually been going on more recently. My eight minute video of the school bus build from the picking it up in Florida and essentially where I am now, the school bus conversion as I'm living in it full time on the road. Uh, that got a lot of traction. Uh, so, we have a lot more subs on this channel and just wanted to give everybody an update to what I've been up to as well as the frequently asked questions that were on the video. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background and uh, welcome to all the people that have subbed before and I will be answering uh, questions over here to the side as well but just to give you a little bit of a heads up of how this whole thing started and why I built the school bus. So I've lived in a uh, class B which is a camper van then a class A and I was looking at different rigs, whether that be a super C motor home, which is essentially almost like a semi truck front end with a motor home in the back, as well as a fifth wheel. But when it came down to weight and build quality, I just wanted to go with something uh, that would last for many years that could hold a lot of weight. Because with this school bus conversion, I have 200 gallons of fresh water that's around 1600, 1700 pounds just in water alone. And with the school bus chassis, they're able to handle that. So that's actually the first frequently asked question on the video. A lot of people saw that I was using three quarter plywood. I was putting a lot of weight in this bus. Uh, the bus <clears throat> completely done with my brother in it and my dog. So that's about, I'd say about 260 pounds plus all my brother's luggage, about an extra 300 pounds. The bus weighed 29,300 pounds. Uh, that was without water. But still, you're getting the low 30,000 range um, with a full tank of water and fuel with me in it. And the total carrying capacity of this bus is 36,000 pounds. So with that in mind, I still have five, four or 5,000 pounds left in the capacity of this rig. Uh, put a new suspension on it, new shocks, uh, revent some of the leaf springs. So... When it comes down to the suspension, I really went, I really had in mind that this rig would have a lot of weight. And also, I wanted to build everything with three quarter because those that were commenting on the video, they probably never really been in a class A or lived in a class A for any amount of time. And you'd be surprised. I bought a pretty nice, like it was, a, it was a Monaco, and they're known for their high quality, but still the amount of particle board, uh, staples and glue in that rig was just ridiculous where with this everything in this bus is made out of three quarter uh built it to last for the next 10 15 years so that's why i went with uh with that type of quality and that much weight uh, another frequently asked question was would the engine and transmission have an issue with that much weight and the cummins 83 with the allison 3060 is just an absolute beast of a setup it is not gonna affect that engine whatsoever uh, how much weight is in this bus uh, and another reason is with the cummins 83 and that allison 3060 i bought this bus originally for three thousand dollars worst case scenario if i did have a, a correct engine or a wrecked transmission you can get one it's allison there's allison dealers all over the united states as well as cummins but if i wanted to get a used engine i could literally go to about any junkyard and they're going to have that same cummins 83 and if the engine is at a shop that I trust, uh, the Cummins 83 is a wet sleeve engine, which means that the engine can actually be rebuilt in the bus. So all they do, the, the piston cylinders uh, have a casing around them that can actually come out of the engine. They put a new uh, cylinder uh, lining in there and take the heads to a shop, get the heads redone, and essentially have a brand new engine that's going to be good for 300, 500,000 miles as long as you take care of it. You know, so that's kind of the reason why I went with the school bus, just in a uh, little bit of a background there. Um, Scott OG76 asked, so is it just you and the pup now? So right now the dog is with my ex-girlfriend, but I'll be getting him back in April. Yeah, cylinder sleeves. There we go, Moose. <clears throat> um, another common question I got about the bus was how much was it to do this build? So right now I have every single receipt. Well, not every, I tried to keep every receipt, but some of them get lost or whatever, but I have four baggies full of receipts as well as a stack of Amazon receipts. I'm going to be sending that to my, uh, my tax person 
uh, and she's going to add that all up for me. So I'll know how much in receipts that I have. And then also on top of that, I did pay, uh, my friends to help me with the bus. So in the video, you saw Jim, uh, he had the long white hair and Wes, uh, he was the bald guy. I paid them for helping. So I'm going to add that to the cost. But right now I think in the total build, I have 35 to 40,000 in this build. And those that know RVs as another frequently asked question on the, uh, on the video was, um, you know, did, did I have people or did, did I pay the people to help? And yeah, I did. And that adds to the cost. So a lot of people thought that I was putting too much money into this bus. But if you look at the coaches that have the Cummins engine and the Allison transmission, like the actual class A RVs, if you got something with this build quality, with that engine and transmission, you'd be paying easily $250,000, $300,000 for a used uh, coach. That's that's not even the new one. Oh, my Zeppelin played. Uh, the name of the bus is uh, Zeppelin 2. I'm a big fan of Led Zeppelin, so that's where it got its name as well. Uh, Phil saw us at Lake Pleasant. What's up, bud? Donald Trump asked, how much money do you make? So I have nine sources of income, uh, different sources of online income. Uh, the way that I view my, uh, my income is some people have a hose and they try and fill up a bucket. The hose is their salary. They have one source of income. They try and fill that up. And at the end of the month, that's how much money they make. Where I have, in this analogy, nine buckets out catching raindrops. And at the end of the month, it all pours together. Right now, I'm making anywhere from ten to twenty a month, ten to twenty thousand, depending on uh, what those income streams do, because it fluctuates, right? So, if one bucket doesn't get that much raindrops, then another bucket might fill up more, you know. So it fluctuates each month. Um, and another frequently asked question is, you know, why haven't done, why haven't I done the roof? Why haven't I painted the outside? That's because I'm paying off the debt from the build as well as all of my previous travel debt before I do any aesthetics. So until I get that that uh, credit card paid off, I'm not gonna be doing any other uh, aesthetics. I'm just gonna be saving my money and paying off debt. Kimberly asked, do you need a CDL? That's state by state. The state that I'm licensed in and registered in, you do not need a CDL. Uh, Kimberly, yeah, and I mentioned the bus is probably around 30,000 pounds right now with a total capacity of 36. Oh, Carol, thanks thanks for ordering through the Amazon. That's one of my sources of income. That's not that, like the Amazon doesn't really add up to that much, but basically what I do is when that Amazon money comes in, that just goes into parts for the, the bus. So, you know, the vent hood came from Amazon Associates. I think part of my faucet came from that. So basically anything I get from Amazon Associates just goes right back into the bus. Hello from Vegas. Ashley asked, how much debt that do I have? I did have 30, 35,000, but I've been paying that down. Uh, no air brake endorsement, Moose. Uh, Michael asked what color I'm going to paint it. It'll probably be white with uh, black accents with uh, an off-grid schoolie logo or a Led Zeppelin logo, the Icarus. I'm still not too sure on what I'm gonna do with that. Uh, so another frequently asked question on the video was uh, how is it parking this rig? And honestly, it's not that bad. I'm about to, uh, because I'm currently on the road filming. So I have the Off Schoolie YouTube channel and then I have Tiny Home Tours. So Tiny Home Tours, I essentially travel around and uh, shoot video of people's tiny homes. So I do tours of, of their homes and I put it on the, the YouTube channel. And within the next two weeks, I'll probably get anywhere from 20 to 30 different tiny homes. And this will be the first test of actually going to different places and using this bus for what I built it for. I built it specifically to film for tiny home tours and live in and travel around. So... Basically, every component of this bus was built for my, my lifestyle and how I make money on the road. 
So that's why I have so much water storage. It's why I have so much food storage. So I can just fill up everything, go to the grocery store, fill up my water, and I can literally be off the grid. I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need to go to any stores and just be self-contained in my bus. But with parking in cities, it's always a little bit more tricky. And when I do these tiny homes, that'll be the first test. I will be getting a tow car this summer. Uh, once all the debt's paid off, I'm just going to buy the car with cash. It won't be anything crazy. Probably a Honda Element for four or five thousand dollars, and then uh, start towing it be behind the bus. And that way, I can go to say like a Walmart or a Home Depot, something with larger parking lots, unhook the car, then go film the tiny home. And then I do have a security system in here that has cameras where uh, any time that there's movement in here it'll send an alert to my phone and then I can actually see what's going on. So I feel comfortable leaving the bus in a, in a spot. Plus nobody's getting in that door. I welded on um, some bars. People can't get in the windows and it has a really heavy duty lock on the door. And if this isn't a public place during the daytime, so my bus out a window, I think people are going to notice and then I'll get an alert on my, on my phone. So looking through the questions, I'll be needing an inverter charger for my lithiums. So if you are, we get a bump on a referral, happy to support for sure. Yeah, Phil, uh, send me a, uh, a message on Facebook or Instagram. Um, I do work with some companies and uh, I use Victron. And so far it's been absolutely outstanding. The, the solar in this is, it's running a residential fridge, chest freezer, and I'm on a iMac right now, runs it full time. And it, it's been doing really awesome. So if you do anything, just let me know. Hello from Turkey. Dan, yeah, a lot of people are doing this on a boat. They're just living out on the out on the water, living an awesome life. I respect water too much to get a sailboat. That's that's for sure. I, I respect the ocean so much. I don't want to be out there on a boat if it decides to get nasty out there. If I stay in the harbor, absolutely go fishing all day, but not the open ocean for me. Mad Mike, thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Uh, Matt B. So I have not done a tour with 2F Overland. Um, hopefully I'll do one with their new rig, but <clears throat> the way I do tours is I don't really push them. Uh, if people, basically the, the channel has, I think it's around 270,000 subscribers. So it's a really good bump for people that have social media accounts that want to get out there. I'm able to get content. They're able to get exposure. Um, they're able to promote their businesses and everything. I do them as mutually beneficial as possible, but I never push anybody. And if, if they ask to do it, then yeah, but I, I never really ask anybody unless I'm prospecting, you know, if I'm traveling to an area like, Hey, I saw you're here. I'll, I'll hit them up. But other than that, if I, if I see them in person, if they want to do it, I, absolutely. Cool breeze. Yeah. Billy's, uh, Oh, cool. So Billy is a guy that helps me do some metal fab. Looks like he helped out cool breeze. He's a really talented guy. If you driven in the snow, we did drive a little bit in the snow, but it wasn't too bad. I mean, these buses have so much weight. It's fine. Uh, suspension's awesome. Um, I got all new uh, shocks on here that had the original shocks from 2002, 2001 in here, and it just it drives so much different. Oh, from Brazil. Uh, what is your sleep like while you're moving? Actually, you sleep like a baby in this bus. It's like your your tree fort when you're a kid, or your your pillow fort, or your blanket fort when you're a kid. You have like this safe spot that's yours. It's it's pretty awesome. I sleep really well in this bus. Um, Jaybird, do you keep fire extinguishers in your rig? Yes, I keep, I have four fire extinguishers in here. One of them is a CO2 fire extinguisher for the lithium. It's about the only way you can put out a lithium, uh, fire. And, uh, that's just in case something happens with the batteries. It was pretty expensive, but it is worth the investment. Uh, solar is 24 volt. Uh, I am not a baseball fan i'm not really a sports fan i'm too busy doing my own stuff to if, if, if i go to a game like if i go to a person have a beer and a brat watching baseball hanging out with some friends absolutely i'll, I'll do that but i don't like watching it on tv uh 
RV Frito, what's going on? Uh, I will probably be back in Seward next summer. Hawaiian Joe, when you first started your channel, how did you deal with trolls and negative people? Yeah, so I think the overall arcing thing that I learned is hurt people saying that I heard from another blogger, and it's so true. You got to just keep in mind that I'm in a parking lot right now, so there's semis driving by, and they're really loud. Sorry. Um, but with, with trolls, what, what I've really learned is a lot of those people are people that, you know, that they have a lot going in their lives and their one outlet, the one thing they can do to let out their anger or their frustration or their sadness is to, you know, do it online. It's where they, they're, I call them keyboard cowboys. This is their only avenue of lashing out the world or getting back at the world. And somebody that takes the time to be negative online, it really is just like I I feel bad for him. You know, it's it's one of those things where doing this online stuff has helped me realize my dream. And if I have to deal with a couple of people that are not so happy in their, their lives at the moment, then it's more of I, I feel bad for them rather than, oh, poor me. And it took me a while to, to figure that out. Like when I first started, it did it did really bother me. But the more that I learned about it and the more that I realized, for example, a lot of the negative comments come in on weekend nights. It's when they're sitting by themselves at home, alienated for whatever reason, the comments are always weekend nights, Friday night, Saturday nights. And that's just people by themselves just because they have nothing else to do. They, they have no other avenue to to express themselves. Uh Craven, I can't do a tour because you're on my iMac and it's attached to the wall. So you wouldn't be going too far. Um, no plans to go through Minnesota. Honestly, if I never go east of the Mississippi, I'll be happy. Uh, I get out here in the west. There's a lot more places to park. There's a lot more to see. There's a lot more outdoor activities. I'll probably stay up in Alaska for summers and Arizona, New Mexico, Texas for winters. I think that'll be the rotation. But this year I will be staying in lower 48, man, doing the Pacific Northwest. Got some tiny home festivals I'll be doing, and that'll be my main goal this uh, this summer. Barefoot, the uh, solar is working awesome. Uh, people that are online trolls are the ones that are bullied in the real world to me personally. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Thanks for joining, Jimmy. Thanks for watching. Uh, JJ asked, do you have a bike? I eventually want to get one of the uh, foldable e-bikes. That way I can charge it with my solar and then just bop around the local area. I don't really park in towns too often, but I do park in spots. that have a lot of cool trails. So just take the e-bike out, go exploring. If I do happen to park in town, I need to get around town. I just hop on the e-bike and uh, bop around with free energy. Aubrey, thanks for watching from England. I am doing pretty well, Cindy. Thanks. For those who ask, then ask, then how, how much they make, how much did they spend on their home? It doesn't really make too much sense there, Maverick. Uh, no plans to go to Pennsylvania. Stay in west of the Mississippi. And uh, we're at 19 minutes and 20 minutes here just to give people some uh, some information on the channel, the new subscribers, and just chat with some of the old subscribers. Um, another thing people asked a lot was, uh, we already covered the CDL, they asked that. Um, money on the road. I'll go ahead and end with uh, with this question. Well, there's a couple. Um, Relic asked, uh, "Would a scooter e-scooter be better?" Not really, because I'm going to get a foldable bike. So underneath uh, my standing desk area back there, I'm going to just fold the bike up and put it back there. Um, but Edwin asks, uh, "What's the best about having a converted school bus RV that you notice?" 
Uh, for me, it's absolutely weight capacity. I can add anything to this bus. I can add as much water. I can modify it later. Um, just, just the overall construction of this thing and the drivetrain. I mean, it's, it's just an absolute tank going down the road. Safety features. I mean, it has complete H channel. It's made to protect children and rollovers. Uh, a lot of people asked, you know, they, they kind of seem to think that the school bus wasn't safe as an RV, but just Google class A wreck or travel trailer wreck or fifth wheel wreck and see how much those things just absolutely disintegrate when they, when they roll, when, when they flip or they get hit by something, they're really not made that well. And for me, I was driving through the mountains of California one time and an F-150 uh, flipped over with a small travel trailer. And it literally looked like, like if somebody told me that a propane tank blew up, like a big 40 gallon propane tank blew up in that travel trailer. It looked like, like there was a stove over on that side of the road they had the trailer and every vertical support in that thing was just completely destroyed. And that was a rollover going down a hill where a bus, you know, there's, there's stories of school buses flipping over and they just get a tow truck out, flip it back over and down the road it goes. It's just a complete structure that's made to, to protect kids. So I'd say the overall construction is my, my favorite part that I've noticed about the, uh, the school bus conversion. So, that is it. Thank you for watching, everybody. Welcome to the new subscribers. And if you haven't checked out the, uh, the video from about a year and a half of work on the bus, it's on the channel. Thanks, everybody.